Yeah, what's up guys? We're back to our final part now, creating this SD card model. So, obviously, before I didn't mention in the last video, but the reason I've got all of this in one Photoshop file is just it's easier to keep track of. You've got one file for one asset, you've got your normal map details, you've got your air, you've got your diffuse, and you can have your spec and gloss. It's all going to be in one, and it's just a lot easier to keep track of. So right now, we're going to go into Marmoset. Um, and we're gonna make this shine. Now, if you don't have Marmoset, the principles are still the same for other programs and other renderings, so that's not a problem, it's still useful to learn. So we're gonna need to export this model, so we can click on it and go to File, Export Selection, go to the desktop and we'll just call this SD card, and we want this as an FBX, yeah, and I'll save, uh, well, actually what I will do is I'll show you the, the settings I use go to geometry and ensure smoothing groups is on um, t -t 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 I tend to put animation off unless you've got animation that's cool and then come down to advanced options and where it says FBX file format I go to ASCII and then FBX 2013 that was what I was told to use purely because it's a lot better I don't know the reason why so I've kept that and I haven't had a problem so I'm always going to keep with that I guess so yep yeah, and then you can export it now if you don't have FBX S export on there then what you do is you come up to Windows settings settings and preferences and go to plugin manager and there will be an FBX export somewhere probably at the bottom somewhere uh, da -da -da -da, where is it there will be one oh no sorry FBX I think it's fine it's OBJ sorry if you want to export OBJ there's an OBJ one here so it's not FBX but it might be useful to know so you just need to click loaded and auto load and then you can export just if you have that problem so now we've got that export, uh, exported we can open up Marmoset and it's just a really easy program to use it's not complicated I managed to learn this myself without any tutorials so and it was quite simple so like any other program you'll go file import model so we'll get our SD card and then we got something like this Obviously, we haven't got the textures on it yet, but we're going to do that now. So we're going to load in our diffuse and normal map. So go up to our, well, we can delete all this, create a new material and call this SD card. Oops. And then our albedo is our diffuse map. So we click on that and then open up our diffuse. Drag and drop that onto the mesh. So then we've got something. And then what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Uh, normal map. So we come up here, surface normal map, and open that one. And as I mentioned earlier, you do your. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Oops. Um, I need to turn off my AO and then re save my diffuse map because I saved it with my AO on. So save it without the AO. I've also got the AO separately. So as I mentioned earlier, AO is going to be plugged in separately. So albedo should be normal now. Yeah. And then we're going to occlusion. Come down to here, go to occlusion to enable that, and occlusion map, and we can just add our AO. There we go. So if I now turn this off and on, if you look at this area, or especially the normal map details, you'll see a difference. Yeah, there's slight shadows and softening of these areas, which is nice. I like that. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to focus on our spec and gloss maps. Now, looking at our image again, which I deleted once again, or well not deleted, but closed down, you can see, probably from just from, you know, seeing one in real life, I know for a fact the label's going to be really shiny, you know, and then the rest is plastic. So, in terms of the specular levels, if we just have a bit of a play around and glows, just focus on the label right now. We're going to make, turn the gloss up a bit, so it's very shiny like that, yeah. Although you can see the HDRI background in it, which is what we want because obviously you need something to reflect in there. But it's way too reflective, so we need to come to our reflectivity to our specular map and bring that down a bit. So it's shiny, but just not very reflective, yeah. And that's kind of what we want purely just for the label because the label is that stickery shiny feel. So that's the sort of settings we need. So we're going to go into our Photoshop layer now and we're gonna <coughs> sorry <coughs> oh god we're gonna create a gloss map now a gloss map and a spec map are easy they're just black and white images or greys shall I say but um 
It's quite simple to do. This is how I would do it. You could bake and you know use Quixel Suite to get specular maps, but I learnt doing them manually. So I'm going to teach you how to do it manually, just in case something fucks up and you need to do it, and then that way you know how to do it. So as I, sorry, as I can see, the gloss is all the way up, and the specular is nearly all the way down to achieve this look. So what we can do now, we can duplicate our diffuse layer. Bring it up to the top and call this gloss. We'll focus on the gloss just for, for now. We won't worry about the specular. Um, now the way that these values work, go back to Marmoset, anything that's high is a white colour. Anything low is a black. So say like now same with an alpha map, anything white is visible, anything black isn't visible. So what we want is anything that's really shiny is white, anything that isn't is black, and anything in between is the level of you know the level of gloss so we know for a fact this is all the way up so this is going to need to be a solid white so what we can do is we can grab this whole label layer and merge it and then go onto the color and whack that into a white because the label is one thing the whole thing's going to be reflective so they're quite easy to make gloss maps depending on what the model is but yeah so now we've got this nice gloss map and then Again, this is going to be quite shiny, so let's go and have a look. Turn it around. That's not very helpful with the fact that there's no light coming from there. Turn it this way just a bit so we can see. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get a nice... Uh, have I got an SD card on me? That might be useful to look at a real-life reference. Um, oh, well, no, I haven't. It's not here, so... I'm just trying to think what kind of material that is. It's going to be a sort of some sort of shiny, but not too reflective. So maybe it doesn't help. Maybe with the the background HDRI image. So if you go to Sky, we can go to Presets and we can change a few. Um. I do like garage. I'll just use the garage one. There we go. Um, turn off the AO for now, just so we can see what we're doing. Let's have a quick. I'll say half gloss and maybe a half spec. We'll have a go and see what it looks like. We can always come back. So, because it was half, we can go onto our layer here. And because it's half, we can do it halfway in between black and white. So that would be just sort of the mid-grey. Yeah. And then, for the base, um, if there's if you've got any colour, usually uh, any metal um, textures and whatnot, you turn it black and white, and then you'd adjust the brightness and contrast. So then you've got a specular feel for that texture. These are just basic colours right now. So you're not going to get any speck or gloss details. It's just going to be a straight... I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I, I I might be able to show you later if we got time. So the base. Let's, oops, mum set. Sorry. Let's have a look what we want our outside to look like. So we, it's not going to be very glossy. I wouldn't have thought, but there's going to be a bit of specular. Um. So looking at the side, that looks okay. Maybe a bit too much reflectivity, so bring it down a little bit. Uh, something like that probably looks okay. So that's a very little specular, but a sort of just a bit under a mid-gloss. So come to our base. Now this is a bit tricky, because I've got the grain. I want to inflict that grain on my, um, on my gloss map. So I don't know whether to make that just a bit brighter to think about there. That's, I'll give it a go and then see what it looks like. So now we've got my gloss map. I can file, save, targa again, and go to SD gloss and 24 bit. And I'll plug that into the gloss map now. So as you can see now, I've got a very shiny thing here, but a very plasticky thing here. And that's the kind of effect you want. Right now we just need to do the levels of um, specular or reflect specularity or reflectivity because obviously it's not looking right. So again, for let's start with the label. It was just sort of nearly next to nothing, wasn't it, on the old specular? So 
come back to our Photoshop layer, we can actually duplicate the gloss, rename that to spec, and go again back to our label. And this one needs to be a black, you know, very dark grey actually, very dark, because the speculate, speculate is really low. Now that's the difference you get with gloss and spec maps. Gloss maps tend to be a lot brighter and a lot, lot, uh, a lot lighter. Specular maps tend to have a bit of darker colours to them, and I'll show you that when I'm finished. Um, again, here, let's have a look at the back. What we kind of want for a specular? We'll go for a mid, just to give it a little test, and then we'll see what it looks like. So again, it's just going to be sort of like a, well, again, just a mid grey colour, so that can stay the same. Um, the indent. I didn't do the indent, did I, on the the gloss? No worries. That's going to be the same material as this. So I'll try and match that. Turn off the specular layer. Go to light indent. Um, well, actually, no. I'll just go to brightness and contrast. Sorry. And maybe bring that down just a bit like that, so it matches the outside. That would do. So that's the gloss done. Go back up to spec. Uh, go to light indent, and that needs to be the same, but best to do the base first. So the base, let's have a look at what specular we want because we want to see the detail. Too much is, too, you know, ruins it a bit. So something like that. So just a little wee bit. So again, brightness and contrast, not a colour overlay because we want to keep the detail. We can bring that down to something like that actually, that'll do. And then again, get the light indent and, oops, brightness and contrast and we'll try and match that. Do that and maybe a little bit again. There we go. And now you can see the difference between the gloss and the spec map. That's the spec, that's the gloss. That's the spec, that's the gloss. So one's a bit darker and one's a bit lighter, and that's how you can sort of tell which one's which. Right, so I will save the gloss again, purely because I made a change. Now, this is a bit of a tedious job, but if you want to do it all by hand, this is the way to do it. And this is the way that I found, you know useful to me. So what we'll do is create another spec one now and then save. It's just useful to know just in case anything happens and then you're stuck doing it by yourself. So if I keep this at a level where we can see now, if I import the specular map, if I do it on the other side, I'll let you know when I do click yes, watch it change and see what the effect does. Right, ready? Three, two, one. There you go. Only a little change, but as you can see now, Plasticky, specular fill, shiny fill. And that's what the gloss and spec maps do. Um, da -da 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 -da. And what we can do is we can go into our sky and we can start actually rotating this scene around to get the most out of the lighting. Uh, something like that will do. Um, I will create a skylight, actually. Do that from here. So as you see, I clicked on the image and it's created a light, a skylight. And what that does is wherever the image is, you know, see if I go back to sky, I plonked my light here, so it will create a light from that pixel value, so it's taking the colour from that pixel and emitting a light from that direction, so as I can see it's near the doorway, and this is the doorway here, so it's it's taking a, a light from this area and it's shining it down on my on my model, and you can do several lights, you can do a few more, you can do nice key fill lights, so let's have a look at um, some more Let's do a nice blue at the bottom. However, I will bring the brightness of that just a bit down. And the skylight, can I bring it up a little bit? Uh, a wee bit. And then that, that might just cast some shadows as well. If Maybe not on this model, purely because there's not a lot to cast shadows on. Um, but yeah, there we go. Now we've got sort of like a, an SD card model. And then you can uh, go to render we can actually go to wireframe hit the color to white and then you can export that which is nice so I go to scene and I usually go into my sky and then bring the backdrop brightness down so I can actually just see it's still using the the, the image as a HDRI background but you just can't see it um, is there anything else I can sort of tell you right now yeah there's another thing if you have some sort of model and then you turn it around and a face is missing it's because if you click on the actual mesh it says cull back faces basically it sort of saves memory you know by doing it but if you you got a model and some of your faces are missing and you know they should be there check that check that off yeah so 
that should work nice fine um, so we've got our lights we've got all that I'll turn off the wireframe now what you can do is you can add some extra little effects uh, high res shadows um, you can again do ambient occlusion now I didn't do the ambient occlusion but you know I mentioned uh, I think it was the last tutorial about this area here you can actually do that inside Marmoset and then you can do the strength of it you know the size of it so then you get a bit more for your for your render so there you go so I've got the normal details for my uh, the AO from my normals and I've also got the AO from my my shapes and then you can add local reflections on as well I don't know if that's going to make much of a difference here no it doesn't but basically if I had a shiny object here like I do my sticker if I had another object in front of it it would reflect that um, it uses your local models to reflect that um, yeah I'll have to come to that in another tutorial because we're getting up to 15 minutes now I didn't want to make this too long um, so then again you can use a watermark so render in Marmoset Toolbag 2 I tend not to do that I do them separately um, and then what I do is I come up to capture settings and then you can choose your width and height and 1080 is cool sampling I always put to 25 it's always nice and I put transparency which means it will only save out our asset it won't save out the background uh, and then PNG is fine because obviously PNG and Targa have alphas JPEG you won't so don't pick JPEG and then do transparency because that is not supported um, even though it's there but yeah PNG is fine so we'll click OK so that's the settings done um, da -da -da -da, make sure everything's fine yep 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 so then what we can do is we can start filling our scene and we'll go f capture image and then we'll, ju we'll just do a few angles Uh, t -t 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 -t. Uh, I'll just do that as well. If anything, I would have liked to have put a bit more detail into the background, but it's fine. And as well, I would have rounded the edges. Um, but like I said, it's only a little model. You're probably going to see it for, like, from this distance. So from that, it doesn't look too bad. Yeah, what well, I will do, actually. I'll capture that. Just because I like the shine on it. So yep, yeah, so we'll save that. We got our gloss map, spec map, and whatnot, and we've rendered it in Marmoset. So that's how you go from creating a model, UV in it, texture in it, creating normal maps, and then you have a game asset. So if I open these up full screen, I can show you. And that's what we've got. Now this is a basic model though. This is literally the basic of basics. So when you come to your larger models, it takes a lot more time doing your, your normal maps, a lot more time modeling, and definitely a lot more time texturing. Um, not to mention all the rendering, lighting, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I hope this has been useful for you guys. I hope you liked it. And if you want to see sort of more tutorials and whatnot like this, but obviously bigger, better models, then go ahead. And if you want to suggest any models, that'd be great. Um, and I'll just try and cover some more tutorials like high to low poly bacon and that in the future. So, please like and comment, and I'll hopefully see you in the next videos. Peace.